give him praise, give him glory. He's definitely worthy of all the attention that we could give him here this morning. And he's done an awful lot for every one of us. The best gift that he's ever afforded us, if we never get another blessing physically or spiritually again, that he gave his life on the cross for us and got up for third day. That's enough to come out here and praise him for this morning if that was the only thing that he's done for us. And I'm glad that he's done a lot more for that as we move forward. And it's good to see all of you. Welcome all of you. Getting ready to go to prayer if you got an unspoken request. God bless. God bless. Anybody got a spoken request here this morning? Several mentioned here Friday night. Let's not forget all those we mentioned then. Pray for each other. Pray for this meeting today. We've got brothers and sisters scattered all over the place today at different meetings. So let's, let's ask the Lord to be with those meetings. And other places as well, churches that's gathered in the Lord's name. The Lord, what we would want the Lord to accomplish here, that he would accomplish that at those other places as well. That his will would be done. Lifeline thrown out, the church strengthened, unsaved, drawn by the power of the gospel. And uh, let's just lift each other up in prayer and pray with and for one another today. All right, anything else before we go to prayer? All right, everybody able, willing, come down this way. If you want to bow up front here with us, you're welcome to. And uh, we'll ask Brother James, if he will, lead us in prayer this morning. Everybody pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, in their last we thank you for being here. Bless the Lord, we give you blessings and we don't know about another day. Bless the gather around here today. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here. We're thankful, Lord, for your gathering today. God bless you, 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 Lord, for your gathering today. Thank 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 you, Lord, for your gathering today. 
for ourselves but for our center friends you know right. they had that opportunity one more time brother Dylan they can step forward and they can receive this that we have and I look upon you and I, I it, it just uh, in my heart I feel that love one for another that you know I didn't have that at one time but when I give my life to the Lord uh, he gave me that, that that godly love that I have for my brothers and sisters and that desire that I have for the sinner man to give his life for, uh, to the Lord, you know. Uh, for it's not God's will that any should perish, but to all come to righteousness and live. And, and uh, that's a, a gift of God that he gives us. He said, how, we, how do you know that you've been born again? The scripture said, for you'll love the brother. That's right. And that's, that's, a, that's a distinct, evident uh, fact that when you're born again, and you come out to these churches. It doesn't matter this church. It could be a strange church that you've never been to. But you love them people because you know that they're on the same track that you right. are. Yep. That they love the Lord Jesus Christ. And that they have 
They have surrendered this right here. Yep. Set it to the side that they may sow unto that spiritual man that they may have life eternal. And I was reading a little bit this morning about the Lord uh, speaking to a group of people uh, and apparently they, he had spoke to them before and that's when he fed them the bread. When, when the great gathering there was and he, he divided the loaves among them the people and it fed them and said they were all filled. Well in this scripture here I want to read to you a little bit and this is the return they come again seeking him and he says unto them he said uh, I say unto you ye seek me not because you saw the miracles but because ye did eat the loaves and were filled yep. so they were seeking that again they wanted to be filled again and he says uh Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which endure unto everlasting life. This is Christ teaching them here about this. Uh, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom ye, he hath sent. And I'm standing before you this morning, and out of love, I'm, I'm telling you out of a warning, and out of just the way that I live my life, and I've seen it, that it's up to you as an individual. The scripture tells us that he's laid before us good and evil, and for us to choose this day whom we're going to serve this day. And today is this day. As every day in our life, as we as we raise up from our beds, we have the choice that's set before us. The Lord said, good and evil. <clears throat> now that's Christian and sin. We don't, he's not a forceful God. He's not going to force us to serve him. He's out of love. He's presenting unto us the truth. And he's laid before us good and evil. Now his hopes is that you'll receive him. It's through his son. And you'll do the will of God. And we'll go on a little farther here. It says, uh, They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? You see, that's just like the world. Today they, they, they seek a sign. They want to see some uh, miraculous thing. And the scripture tells us that no sign shall be given except for John. As he, as that story how he is in the belly of the whale, and from the belly of the whale cried Jonah. The, the Bible says from the belly of hell cried out. He was in torment there. And he was running from God. And how that he came forth and he went to do the will of God then after he was delivered from that belly, that belly of that whale. Now that's the sign right there that's been given unto us. And he was a witness unto Nineveh, as Christ is a witness unto us today. That's the sign, and the only sign that's going to be given. And there's people that seek the sign. When the Lord shows me, then I'll come forward. The Lord is showing you every time the gospel is preached unto you. That's right. And the scripture says, today is the acceptable time. Harden not your heart. This great joy and, and love that come from heaven's country down here and made, made a way for you to escape the sin and the evil and death eternal. He's here today. And you can have him. All you have to do is in your heart of hearts say, Lord, I can't make it without you. I'm going, I'm going to die and go to a devil's hell without you. You must realize and, and you, by this time in your life uh, most of you have already heard enough scripture. Enough that you have enough knowledge about scripture that you know that you need the Lord. Absolutely need that, that blood that he shed upon the tree of the cross that covers all sins. <clears throat> they said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then uh, that we may see and, live and, and, and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now here they're these little Jew boys, as 
bragging about the manna that their father gave them from, from the wilderness. And they don't realize what's and who's standing right before them. And I want to come back to this here in a little bit. But we'll go on right now. Uh, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father gave you the true bread from heaven. Now here you tell me, my Father gave you the true bread. That bread that Moses gave you was not the true bread. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. That's right. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. They wanted it forevermore. I do too, don't you? Amen. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Now he got real plain with them. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, should I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. I thank God yes, yes. for that promise. Yes, praise the Lord. That all that receive him. Yes. Now this is a promise unto us. That we're going to be raised up at the last day. Yes. To, from corruption to incorruption. From this old mortal body to immortality. We're going to live forever. We're going to have that glorified body just like Christ. And truly... That prayer that he prayed in the garden when he said, let them become one with me as I am one with thee, that we be one together. Truly, on that day, that prayer will be fulfilled. Those that seek the Lord Jesus Christ, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength now, love him. That's the commandment. you got to love the God, the God that, that we serve. Amen. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I come down from heaven? Here they are getting in the flesh again, and they're not seeing the spiritual aspect of what Christ is, is laying out before them. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man... No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. There it is again. It is written in the prophets, and they and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Every man that learneth of the Father cometh to Christ because they are wise in the word and they know the Messiah comes. And if you don't come through him, he's the door, you're not going to make it. There's a lot of teachings in this world now and it's going to lead you astray if it, if it teaches you anything other than what I'm telling you, that right. Jesus Christ is the door. If you come through him, you've got her made. But you're going to have to come to him with a broken heart, with that contrite spirit, that you're going to have to seek after him with everything in you. You're going to have to lay even your life aside. And you're going to have to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. And you're going to have to mean it. Because he's a heart searcher. Yes. He's not going to be fooled in any form or fashion. He's going to know it. He's going to know the truth and the truth is going to stand. Yes. Now that any man 
hath, uh, not that any man hath seen the Father, he save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father, speaking of himself. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me have everlasting life. I am the bread of life, he says it again. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. He's real plain with him. He's speaking of an entirely different bread. That man has sustained this natural life. But this bread that he's speaking of, it's going to sustain the eternal life. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And he did that upon the tree of the cross, friends. He gave that bread sure his body. Did. Amen. And he shed that, that blood that our sins would be covered. Thank the Lord. And that we'd be redeemed from it all. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Now let's look at the Jewish aspect on this. It was uh, unclean for the Jew to handle anything dead. And it was unclean for the Jew to uh, eat or drink the blood. The scripture said for the life was therein. And they were not to eat it. So when Christ spoke this, they was taking it natural and they could not understand and would not receive it. And he goes on further to say, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Third time he said. He's going to raise us up, friends. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. There's that part that I was speaking of, yes. being one. Amen. As the living Father has sent me, and I and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which come down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now, friends, we read on, just to make it short here and shorten things up a little bit. We read on where they were some. They were some that left them and went away because of this saying. It was so hard for them to receive because it went against their Jewish teaching. And they was looking at it carnally in the natural. And Christ looked at his twelve and said, Will ye also leave? Will ye also leave me? And Peter spoke up and said, Lord, where would we go, seeing that you have the words to eternal life? Right. Where would we go if we didn't have Christ in this life? We would be, like Apostle Paul said, men most miserable. Most miserable. But I thank God that upon the tree of the cross that Jesus presented his body and that his blood was shed for you and I. That there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And Christ shed his blood upon the tree of the cross for the entire world. And because of that, whomsoever, yeah. whomsoever right. will come forth and receive him. He gave us these promises of yes. eternal life. And he said he would raise us up. Praise the Lord. That is the most magnificent promise in this entire world. Bible that I have ever read to know that I have that promise that he's going to raise me up really. because that I have I want to talk to you about what we do up here uh, the special very very special meeting and to me it's the most special uh, service that, that, that we can have and that's 
the union communion together. Right. And we take that unleavened bread, and I want you to look at this. We take that unleavened bread, and we take that fruit of the vine, and that's natural. And that's all that that's going to be is unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine until, until, listen very closely, until we pray by faith that God's hand would be upon this. And behold, yes. by faith, it becomes the body and the blood of Christ. You're right. Amen. It becomes, brother. Bless yourself. Thank the Lord. <clears throat> he becomes the Savior. He's here. Yes. And we, when we partake in that, we're doing exactly what he said right here. Now I want you to understand what's going on here. The Spirit of God, which dwells within us, when we pray that prayer, that this body becomes the Lord Jesus Christ. What's actually happened there is that the Spirit has manifested itself in the natural. And we truly take the body of Christ and we truly drink His blood. Yes. That's what Christ was speaking to these people about. And they couldn't receive it. They didn't have the Spirit to reveal it unto them, what He was talking about. They were in the flesh and in the natural. And when he brought up things like this, many of them went away. They couldn't receive it. But I thank God that I was born in, and live in a time to where when I was born again, that that Holy Spirit came within me. And these mysteries that was in this Bible began to open up unto me through the Holy Spirit. And that manifestation that we have here, they didn't have back then. No. There were very few of them that had that manifestation of the Spirit in their life. Or it came right down among us. It dwelt right among us. And today we have it right in us. Yeah. And I thank God for that. Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am very thankful. Well, very thankful. That we have that spirit within us that leads yeah. God and directs us, that corrects us when we err. It'll tell you, brother, when you do something that's that's not according to God's plan and His will for us, it'll immediately correct you. Amen. It'll say unto you that little small still voice that spoke to you when you was born again, and it'll it's the same one, and it'll say unto you that wasn't right. You're going you better get you better get shed of that. You better get on them on them. Prayer bombs. Yes. And lets us know when to call upon the Lord and get everything taken care of. That that blood has to be reapplied. Covered that sin again. That same sacrifice upon the tree of the cross. I thank God this morning that I stand before you with the knowledge that He's given me. That I'm no longer out in the world. That I know that I serve a God that sits at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession. Yes. This morning he's making intercessions for you as well. If right. you're out on the outside of the ark of safety, you have come to the exact right point, the right location, and you're hearing exactly what you need to hear if you will let it prick your heart yeah. and draw you, draw you out from that old sinful world that was not intended for you to dwell in. That's, that's it. God's will is for you to be saved, friends. That's why he sent his son. That's why he did that great work upon the tree of the cross. That's why he shed that blood. That's why that, that body was nailed to that old cross. That you might make that choice today. That you might come out of the lost and dying world. And you could place your heart and your mind and your soul and your body in this body of Christ in the church, that you have served the Lord while you're here upon this earth, you're his footstool, and he can get works out of you, you, it, you may touch some other soul yeah. by just the spreading of the gospel, 
by just saying what the good Lord has done for you in your life, how that he brought you out of the field of sin, you may touch another soul and they may see something in you, the <coughs> Holy Spirit, and they may say, Lord, I want that. I want that. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. Right. I want the Lord in my life. I want that life, that, that, that sweet, beautiful, peaceful life Amen. that Christian men and women share. That when the worries of this world just rant and rave, and yet we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. When I was out of the field of sin, I didn't, I didn't understand that fully. I saw these Christian men and women and the peace that they had and how that they lived their life. And when bad things would come up on them, that they would solve it all with a prayer. And I didn't fully understand that until I came out of the field of sin myself and I received it unto myself and boy I felt it then the night that I gave my life to the Lord I'm telling you that I had a peace that a stillness in my life that I had never witnessed it was almost as if it was uh, something that was almost unbelievable that has this really happened to me did I just receive this Did I? is this real and it seemed like everything was a little more colorful. That my entire attitude had changed about life. Yep. That it wasn't all about what I can get and what I can have and what I can strive and work for and scratch out. But it was about my treasure was in a different location. Yes. <laughs> and the things of this life become strangely dim, as the old song said. Strangely dim. And the older I get, the dimmer this life becomes. It doesn't have much to offer. Right. I enjoy coming out to church. I enjoy listening to some good music. I enjoy serving the Lord. I enjoy walking out in the mornings and sitting on the porch with a good cup of coffee and pondering upon the things, the good things that the Lord has, has, has revealed unto me in the Scripture and looking upon His hands creation. I enjoy all that. I love my life. I love my children. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. And But I'm telling you that as far as that goes, uh, we need to be up about the Father's business. And we need to be on guard. Amen. Amen. That's for sure. Because the devil is a ranting and raving creature. And he seeks to steal and to destroy. And we need to be up about the Father's business. We need to be wise in this right here. Amen. That we would know what manner of people to be and that we could head off those old fiery darts. The yes. Bible tells us to put on the full armor of God. Amen. And with that shield of faith that we can block those old fiery darts. And it's not just for ourselves, friends. If you are in a family of any sort, one, two, three, or more, we need to be watching out for our children. And when they step off and they're doing something that's putting them in, in, in a, a bad situation, we need to let them know. We need to know, we need to let them know that they need the Lord more than they need the breath that they breathe. Because this life is going to come to a swift halt one day. Yes, it is. Christ said, I'm coming back. The Bible says that he's coming back. He'll be seen in, in the eastern sky, and there's lightning. He'll shine from the east to the west. And my reward is with me to give unto whomever I will. I do a quick work. You see, it's all pointing to a very fast occurrence. That when the Lord comes back, we're going to give an answer. We're all going to be brought before him. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Now think about it. Will be put, placed on his left and his right. To those on his right are going to hear him say, Welcome Amen. into the joys of the Lord forever. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Those that's on his left, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Right. Listen, what you've heard this morning, you can have it. You can receive it. Or you can turn a blind eye to it and walk out that door the same man that you was when you came in. Yep. And on that day of judgment, we have no promise of tomorrow. It could be today. That's right. On that day of judgment, he'll say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Another important scripture in here. He said, There will be some on that day that comes unto me 
and they will say, did we not gather in thy name? Did we not pray, heal the sick in thy name? So forth and so on. They've done works in the name of Christ. And he's going to say unto them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Let me tell you, there is power in the name of Christ. Yes. And if it's his will, he will work miracles in this life. He will work miracles in this life. Don't think in your heart and your mind that any of it came from you. Right. There's men out there that, that believe, truly believe, that if they're present, that these miracles will occur. If they pray the prayer, these miracles will occur. You've got to have faith, don't get me wrong. Right. But it's not coming from us. It's, it's coming from him that dwells within us. That's right. Him that dwells within us. And the Bible tells us plainly that it does occur. And the Bible tells us if there be any sick among you, they can call upon the elders. That they would come out and lay hands upon him and anoint his head. And he'd be healed. And his sins be forgiven if he had sinned him. These things are, are pondering upon our hearts today. I've been there. I've called upon the elders. I've been anointed. And I stand before you in fairly good condition as far as I know. We don't know. And I'm thankful unto God that he's touched this boy in more than one way. He's touched his flesh. He's touched my spirit. My mind. He's elevated to higher and better things. And it's my hope and prayer this morning that you'll receive this great Savior that I've been speaking to you about before it's everlasting too late. May the Lord bless you keep you in my prayer. Bless you, Brother Terry. Bless you. Good work, Brother. Thankful for what we've been listening to, been a part of already here today. I hope you'll treasure up what Brother Terry has been speaking about, that, that bread. Um, did you notice there what he said had taken place right before that chapter there in John where he was reading from? Lord had just fed a great, great multitude of people. Yeah. And uh, he took just very little and made a whole lot out of it. Yeah. And uh, not just those, but we find women and children included in that great multitude that was there. <clears throat> and the reason that that crowd was there that was listening to him that day, that where Brother Terry started reading from in John, the reason that crowd was there was because they saw that miracle that great multitude being fed. That was the reason that it caught their attention. They saw the working that was something that couldn't have been of this world. It had to be something supernatural, more powerful than man. And that caught their attention and they came by to see what was going on. Yeah. And as they came by there, then he started speaking to them the word, the word of God. Right straight from his lips, that was all in red letters down through there that he was yeah. reading. He let them know that what they had been blessed to see and be a part of there by eating some natural physical bread, he even reminded them of what their fathers, their forefathers had gone through back there and the story they were well acquainted with of those children of Israel when they were going through the wilderness and they got out there and started complaining. They'd already seen the working of God come by and begin to bless them and help them Across that sea, all those plagues had been pronounced, and they saw that down in Goshen they weren't harmed at all because they were where God wanted them to be. Across that great sea there, dry shot, according to the scripture. And on the other side, well, here we are, we're going to starve to death. We should have stayed back there in Egypt. Isn't that like God's people today? I hear complaining all the time. We're no different than they are. We're made out of the same lump of clay they were. God began to let them know he was still in charge. He was still powerful. Sent manna that came down from above. There's a big sermon in that manna and what that it is. Yeah. Began to describe it, what it looked at. It was white, not coriander seed. And it covered the ground like a four of frost, Brother James. Told them you go out and you gather that up. You get what you need today. Because if you keep a little bit back and you get too much, then tomorrow when you go back, you try to get out of your basket again, it'll be rotted. It won't be any good. It'll be spoiled. Right. You got to go the next day and take care of the next day. 
you know, that's a good blessing for us as Christians today. We'll come out here this weekend. God can give us exactly what we need today. It's not beneficial for us altogether in our spiritual walk. It's good for us to look back at how God, and I've been in some meetings, been in some good spiritual services, and I've truly ate from that bread from up above. Yeah. And it's, it's filled me up. It's allowed my cup to overflow. I've been blessed to feel the good spirit of the Lord. Still some in my memory. I can tell you exactly who was there and how that the Lord blessed us. But you know what? As good as that was, as much strength as I got from those good meetings that we've seen right here in this gathering, this, this house and other places, I can't live today and what that done for me back then. I need another dose of it today. He'll give me today what I need today. And I may think I need something a little different than what I got back there or what I am getting today. I may think, Lord, I need something different than what you're giving to me. But he knows exactly what we need. Yeah. He's able to supply our needs according to his riches in glory. So today, let's not live on those meetings. Y'all, yeah, it's good memories to look back on those things. It's good memories, you old timers, to look back up there at Stiltner and see what good meetings you had when you were up there. But we're here today. We're, right. we're serving the same God today that blessed them up there at Stiltner. Amen. We're serving the same God today in those good meetings that I was blessed to be a part of that through my Christian walk. We're serving the same God today, and if we'll continue to trust in him, hold on to his hand, if we never get a good shot in meeting again, we're, we know this. We do know this. If he never gives us a good shot in meeting that begins to roar through this building like it is, I feel that he will if time lasts. But if we never do again, what we received the day we were saved, the peace that we got right now, knowing that we're a child of his, and knowing one day after a while that we're closer now than we were when we started, that should be enough to keep us moving forward here in this life. If I never see another joiner walk down this aisle, that should be good enough for us as we move forward, knowing that we're telling the truth, knowing that we're doing what God wants us to do, knowing that we want to grow closer to him as the brother began to read there that him and us us and him having that close relationship with god and you talk about close communion that's close communion right there having that communication on a constant basis as brother terry began to speak about him being upon that throne interceding on our behalf that we've got the opportunity to go through him to the father what a blessing that is to know that if we're in good standing with him that we've got that communication with him and that he's there to hear us if we never feel that presence like we have in the past before we've got this promise if we're a child of god and we continue the route that we're going that one day after a while we're going to experience something that's far better than anything they experienced up there at Stiltner. It's far better than any meeting I've been blessed to be in down here. Yeah. That we're going to be blessed when we get over there in resurrected form in a new body like an unto the glorified body of our Savior to experience something that we've never experienced down here before that we'll have an eternal day to be able to praise our Lord and give Him the glory yeah. for everything that He's done for us in church. We're a day closer right now. We're an hour closer, a minute closer as the time begins to tick right on. We're closer now than when we first begun at that first starting point. And I thank my God today that we've got a hope on the other side. So what are we going to do in the meantime? Let's keep gathering like we are. When we do gather like this, let's talk to the Lord and he'll begin to give us some of that manna from up above. Did you hear what he began to speak of there? That holy manna. Your fathers, they did eat manna in the wilderness and they are dead. That natural bread that we eat, the natural food that we partake of, it will sustain this body for just a little while. And if we eat something in the morning, by noon or by evening, depending on how much we eat in the morning, I guess, we're going to have to eat again if time would permit because this body begins to get weak. I remember my old mama saying after she ate her breakfast, have a big old bowl of cornflakes and about noon time, you know what she'd say? My cornflakes are getting weak and I'm starting to get a little hungry. Don't we get that way in our natural bodies? Uh, that ought to be the way we are spiritually because as he went on making and to proclaim there as we read the word of God blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness 
for they shall be filled. I thank God that I've got a desire in my heart to feel the presence of the Lord, to be able to get a touch from up above as He comes by and begins to uplift us. And sometimes that bread, when it begins to fill us up, sometimes it's going to bring us down on a level that God can be able to work with us and use us. Other times it may be able to lift us up and to exhort us as we go on our journey. But God knows exactly what we need and when we need it. So let's just trust in Him as the brother has read to us there this morning. And He's going to supply all of our needs according to His riches in glory. Now, as He's told us from that bread back there, I wasn't going to get on any of this, but Brother Terry's got a lot on my mind here this morning since he's been speaking uh, about that bread. When we began to understand that holy manna back there that they saw coming down, it said that it was white. Uh, bless God today, the Word of God is pure. And that's what white represents. Just like when that red blood begins to wash over our black sins, what's it do for us? It makes us as white as snow in the blood of the Lamb. I'm thankful that it allows our, uh, our sins to become white like wool. Another writer began to say that when we plunge beneath that flood of King Emmanuel's blood, uh, bless his name, it begins to allow us to be eligible uh, to have that access to the Father because of what he done, not because of what we've done within ourselves, but because of what he done when he hung on that cross of Calvary and gave that body that the brother began to speak of there a while ago and that that bread of life that he came and offered that for us and that the blood that was flowing through those veins we might be able to partake of and I'm thankful today that when we understand what that he's done that that body that was broken for our sins. And as he referred to that a communion service, that in just about two weeks here, uh, we're going to be blessed if time would permit. And it's the good Lord's will to partake of here in just a few weeks. I'm thankful today that when we're blessed to partake of that and see uh, how that God works in us, that that holy manna from up above uh, that has come down here for us, uh, that it can allow us as we look upon it to give us what we need right now. Uh, and that was able to sustain us and because he said your fathers they did eat manna in the wilderness and they are dead and just like my all eating their cornflakes we're going to get weak on the natural things of this life uh, but if we begin to eat of that true bread uh, of Jesus Christ and get that bread uh, inside of these bodies of ours spiritually speaking uh, then we can have something that can sustain us and uh, that can strengthen us uh, but our problem so much is that when we begin to eat of that, uh, that our natural flesh wants to begin to start fulfilling the desires of it and pulling in the things into our mind, into our life, into our heart, uh, which is going to cause death to come upon us and will cause us to starve spiritually uh, if we forsake the way that God has told us to come to eat of this. Now, our mind is reminded of a time when John uh, began to speak speak back there one day when he was told by the word of the Lord uh, he said I want you to take this little book uh, and I want you to eat it up. Uh, he said when you eat it you take it and take all of it. Uh, don't just leave one here uh, from there but he wanted them to take every bit uh, of that little book and eat it up. Uh, and John was obedient to that and he took that book and he ate it uh, and he said in his mouth uh, it was sweet as honey. Uh, but when it got down into his belly, uh, it became better, Brother James. Uh, just what this Word does for us uh, when we begin to look upon it uh, and see the blessings from it uh, at the first glance in our spiritual stance, uh, it may look uh, so, so sweet to us. Uh, but when it goes right down into what this flesh wants to do, uh, it goes bitter against what I want to do uh, in my natural life. Uh, but I thank my God today uh, that He gives me the strength, uh, that He gives me the help uh, to be able to sustain these members uh, because if I follow after these members that this Word of God uh, is bitter against, uh, that it will lead me the wrong direction, uh, that it will cause me to fulfill the 
wrong desires. Uh, but if he that will hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh, he shall be filled. Uh, let's get it down on the inside uh, and let it begin to work a work that only it can work. Uh, and praise God today uh, if we will look to that as writer began to speak in the book of Corinthians uh, as Paul did say back there uh, when he spoke of how that Moses uh, began to leave those children. Uh, uh, he said that they did all eat uh, of that same spiritual meat uh, and they did all drink uh, of that same spiritual drink uh, and they drank of that rock uh, and that rock was Christ uh, uh, which followed them. Uh, uh, that bread he told us there was Christ uh, uh, that meat that they were blessed to eat of that holy manna uh, uh, man, not the little bread uh, uh, but the holy manna of God. Yeah. It's able to sustain us. That blood that he spoke up there is able to help us and give us the strength that we need. And did you hear what he said about the blood and how that in the very beginning the commandment was to take that blood? You're not to eat of it because he said the blood is the life of the body. If they weren't permitted to eat of that uh, because it was considered unclean. Uh, why was that? Uh, when we begin to look at our blood today, uh, you know what? The blood that I have flowing through this natural body, uh, it inherits and sin uh, right from the very start of things. Uh, my life and my natural body today uh, is sinful but I praise His name this morning to know uh, that Jesus was without sin that uh, no guile was found in His mouth uh, that that blood that flowed through Him had no sin uh, had no God. Uh, it was the only perfect sacrifice uh, uh, that could be offered to mankind here for mankind here uh, uh, that we might have have a hope beyond the grave yeah, because of his blood because of that body that he broke for us on the cross of Calvary today what a blessing that is to know how that that white coriander seed and if we really wanted to dissect and get into that I haven't spoke on that in a long time but I remember as we studied about that manna that fell down from the father back there you know what they used that coriander seed for they used it for heart medication they grind it up and use it as a medicine form don't you know today that holy manna that God has provided for us it's the best heart medicine that any man could ever get a hold of it will be able to go into an old dead a stony heart a cold heart and praise God that manna from up above can make you alive a place inside of you a new heart that love did you hear what the brother spoke about loving him hey that if we're born of God we are born of love and if we're born of God and we're born of love, we knew that we passed from death into life, as Brother Terry told us, because we have that love for the brethren. Yes. <coughs> I'm thankful that I've got love. Yes. That I was born of love. Yes. That I, because I'm born of God, I'm born of that love. Yes. And if we'll continue in the route that he's told us today, the Bible lets us know that that love can help us. That love can keep us from doing the wrong thing sometimes. That's why he let us know in the great chapter in 13 of Corinthians, of that great charity chapter, the love chapter, and that it can hide a multitude. Amen. I've seen it. Yes. continue right on. Greatest of these is charity, he said. And I'm thankful for the love of God that he's provided for us. That white coriander seed can give us the best medicine that we can ever obtain from. He said, I am the bread of life. But you know what else he said as he walked here? I am the great physician. Now, he's the physician from on high that can heal our broken bodies, our spirits that are sick with sin. Now, yes, he began to heal a lot of folks as he walked there and caught their attention and performed many miracles. Uh, he's still yet ready and able today uh, to heal these physical bodies of ours. Uh, but there's a work
more sickness around our people today uh, that's eating harder at them than a cancer ever could in a natural body. Uh, the most aggressive cancer, uh, the most horrible disease that a man could ever be pronounced upon here, diagnosed with, uh, is a thing that we dread to hear. Uh, but I thank my God today that sin uh, is far worse than any disease, anything uh, that we could have prescribed or diagnosed to us. Uh, but today the blood of Jesus Christ is able, uh, it's capable, uh, it's powerful enough uh, to heal us of all the sin uh, and that's eating our people and taking them to a devil's hell. Uh, if they would just believe uh, and follow through with that Holy Spirit of drawing that comes through the gospel message uh, and that can pull them from a field of sin uh, and becoming sorry for their sin. Uh, uh, repentance of what we have done in our life uh, is what God loves to see. It's His will that we would do that. Uh, and when we come that pathway of repentance, uh, uh, letting God know uh, uh, that we need Him and want Him more than anything. Uh, uh, putting Him as number one in our life. Uh, uh, bless your soul today. Uh, uh, when we come that route uh, and begin to see ourselves in that condition, uh, uh, then we begin to let the church know what the good Lord has done for us by mouth confession, uh, uh, being buried with Christ uh, uh, in baptism and raised to walk uh, uh, in the newness of life, uh, uh, setting our mind and our heart on things which be above, uh, uh, continuing and as He commanded the church brethren back there, uh, uh, teach them to observe all things uh, uh, whatsoever I've commanded you. Uh, and I thank my God today that He's blessed us uh, uh, to be able to sit under the sound of the gospel. Uh, uh, because when that gospel rings out, uh, uh, that's the bread from up above. Uh, uh, hey, we begin to speak about our brethren. Uh, uh, when we ask them to take the stand, uh, uh, come and break the bread of life. Uh, uh, brother, I ain't able to. Uh, I can't break it, uh, uh, but I know one that's already broke it. Uh, and he died on the cross. Uh, that body, as Isaiah 53 described it, uh, uh, he was wounded uh, uh, for our transgressions. Uh, uh, by his stripes this morning uh, we are healed uh, and I thank him this morning to know uh, as he was led as a sheep to the slaughter uh, as a lamb done before his shears uh, so he opened not his mouth yes. oh but when he did open his mouth there <laughs> Father forgive them for they know not what they do yes. cried out about six different things there from the cross it's finished Paid in full. The debt that we owed is taken care of. Oh, bless his name. I couldn't pay it off, Brother James. I couldn't work hard enough. I couldn't do enough. I couldn't make enough money. Paid in full. If I would just accept it and step out on the faith that I can obtain by hearing that gospel. Praise the Lord for that. As he said there, that man, white like coriander seed white like that hoar of frost that sits on the ground. He said it was sweet like honey when they began to taste it. And as they began to get it, it sustained them for just a little while. We've already made it clear that that bread that we're eating of, it's able to sustain us as we go forward. It never grows old. It don't get stale. You read of the tabernacle and later of the temple there when they were told to take that short bread put out there on the table that was there and they would have to go daily and begin to take the old off because that day old bread uh, it might get stale, it might start getting moldy, uh, but when they began to put it continually fresh upon that table, uh, resembling and showing forth of what was about to come in the new grace covenant of time, uh, that every day, as we spoke earlier, uh, that we can go back and get a fresh dose of it. Uh, God's not going to give me and you any leftovers today. Uh, it's not warmed over and trying uh, to give us something that will sustain us yesterday for today, uh, but He's going to give us exactly what we need today and it will sustain
sustain us, it will strengthen us, and it can help us uh, if we will allow it to. Uh, when we're weary from the journey, uh, just like old David done back there one day when he was running for his life, uh, and he went up to the old priest there at the temple, uh, and he asked him, do you have any weapons? Uh, yeah, we just got one. Uh, it was that sword back there, and they had it hid behind uh, at the altar. They took that, and he said, man, uh, another time, do you have any bread? Uh, yeah, we just got the show bread. Uh, and they weren't permitted to eat of that, but David said, give me of it. Uh, and I thank God that when he took of that bread uh, that was set upon that table, he knew it would be fresh. Uh, he knew it wouldn't be stale. Uh, he knew that it had been baked fresh for them uh, uh, for the purpose of that table. Uh, and when he took of that and took it to the army that was out there, uh, as they went to fight the fight they were about to battle in, uh, it gave them the strength that they needed uh, to be able to win the victory today. Uh, how many times today have we had to go to him uh, and eat of that bread uh, in the middle of a battle? Uh, hey, when the enemy uh, begins to come our way, who's going up and down, uh, to and fro, seeking whom he made of our, uh, like that old roaring lion, uh, trying to get the best us. Uh, uh, that's why Paul said in the book of Ephesians uh, in the sixth chapter to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, uh, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Uh, uh, having <laughs> Your helmet of salvation, girt about the loins with the truth, your breastplate of righteousness, and be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. <laughs> Having that sword of the Spirit, and the shield of faith, ready to fight against the enemy for his sin. And he's going to throw those fiery darts our way. And we need to be able to quench them on our journey. So if we will eat of that bread that he supplied us, if we'll drink of that blood that he shed for us, and begin to have him inside of us. I, I, I us and him. I, I, you and him. Us and him. All together. I, as a body here. I, and him in us. I, and what a blessing that is to know we've got a friend. I, I better stick closer than a brother. I, I, when we come down to the last journey, he'll be there. I, I, when we fight the fight, I, he'll supply something fresh today. And give us the strength we need as we move forward. Yeah. Thank God for that. When we eat of it, oh, it may go right against what this flesh wants to do, but still eat it anyway. We need to put this flesh in its place. We need to put old Ishmael where he needs to be today and keep him under subjection. And the only way to do that is through his Holy Spirit this morning. It'll give us the strength that we need to fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Moving forward against that old army of evil, of persecution, of all the things that this old devil begins to throw in our, our pathway, then we'll have him, if we'll trust in him, to be able to win the victory when we're able to come down to the end of our journey. Praise God, he's blessed us with that hope down on the inside of no one. And on our journey, if we'll just look around, he'll give us that. David, another time, one thing brings on another. I'm going to try to close here. Yes, uh, another time, David was on a journey, or rather, Jonathan and some of the followers there were out in a battle. A king had already told them, you all don't eat, you don't drink. Uh, you began to sit aside a period of time of fasting. Uh, but one of the leaders of that didn't hear the king say that. And as they sit out on their journey, he knew the men were getting hungry. He knew they were getting weak uh, because they hadn't eaten anything. Uh, and they began to walk out into a wooded forest area and he looked up and he saw the trees full of honey and he said that he shook his rod in the honeycomb and he put it to his mouth and when he did eat of that heavenly honey that God provided for him right there on that journey, he gave him the strength that he needed to endure right on to the rest of the battle. Today God's going to supply what we need and when we need it and if we'll trust in him, we need to be obedient, uh, holding on to his hand. Uh, and when we're weary from the journey, uh, uh, eat some of that heavenly honey that comes our way, uh, uh, that manna uh, uh, that comes down from up above, uh, uh, that we can eat of it and never die. Yeah. Amen. Never die. Spiritually speaking today, we can have life eternal. If you don't know him today, if all we're eating in church, if all you're eating Think about this for a little bit as I get ready to close here. Is all, if we're all we're eating and filling our mind, 
our ears, our heart with is natural, physical things of this world. Yeah, I know we need to eat a, a natural, literal meal to be able to sustain ourselves. But I'm talking about the things that we immerse our minds in. If it's constantly on the things of this world and the things of life and the pleasures that may be around us. And we seldom get into this book and we seldom begin to set aside time of prayer to talk to God. And we seldom set aside time like the brother has told us and I do as well so often. is to just sit out a, a good cool morning or whenever that you have the opportunity to do. How to separate yourself from everything and just begin to meditate on God's goodness, pray to Him, uh, read His book, and He's able to give us a little bit of that manna while we're sitting there by ourselves uh, on a personal basis uh, that can also help us on our journey and then also uh, it can help prepare us uh, when we come out corporately as a group like we are today uh, to be able to come in the right frame of mind uh, uh, that we're ready to worship Him and uh, that we're ready to do what God's will is and praise Him in a service uh, that we don't have to sit through the length of an entire service uh, uh, trying to get our life in order from a week of being away from God uh, away from God's people uh, uh, trying to be in a place uh, uh, whether it's here or somewhere else uh, uh, God has told us to come together as corporately uh, uh, that we can worship and be able to praise Him uh, uh, but the praise service and the worship service that we're in this morning uh, uh, should have started long before we got that's right. Sitting just like he was talking on your front porch. Maybe not just this morning, but it should have been down through our mind all week. Yeah. And we were praying and meditating and thinking. But you know what God likes to do, or the old devil rather likes to do? Next to get our mind over here. Not just here. We, we're focused and we're well aware while we're here. And Satan will get our mind thinking about this while the brother's preaching. And get our mind over here thinking on some evil things or some grudges that we may have in our life against this brother or this sister. It tells us to think about that while the brother or sister sing the song. When it comes prayer time, this little thing will distract us. Or this noise will get us over there. And we don't take time to pray like we ought to when we're with God's people. You know what that is? That's the old devil. Yeah, that's right. But if we come out to service this morning with our mind prepared and getting ready to come to a service, We've heard the old brother. I've been a part of it too. We've talked about her testimonies, the old brothers and sisters coming through the door ready. Come through the door singing. Come through the door testifying. They had church before they ever called the singers up. Wouldn't hurt us today to come together with a mind like that occasionally or often. And we'll be able to praise him and worship him the way that he wants us to. So let's eat on what he's taught us, taught us this morning from that book of John over there. Let's remember, we need him inside of us. We need to be in Him. We need to eat of Him. If we're not careful, I said I was going to close, but let me throw this in there too. Don't call me a liar. Let's think of this. He said a little leaven. Yeah. A little leaven. Leaven. The whole lot. Y'all, you sisters, you, you all know what leaven is. Yeast. Y'all use that to allow your bread to rise and make it to do the things that it's supposed to do while it's baking. A little leaven. It just takes a little bit of that to get in the dough. Once it's in there, you know what it starts doing? It starts spreading. Some of you sisters use that, that Amish bread. You, you, you share it and you just pinch off a little bit of it and you share it with somebody else and they'll mix it up and then it'll, it'll grow from there and then they'll take it and pass it on to their friend or another sister and it'll grow from there. You know what's called that? That's that yeast inside of that growing That's right. and spreading throughout that dough. He's told us to, that unleavened bread that he referred to here. Unleavened bread. Don't have any contaminants in it. Don't have anything added to it. Yeah. He lets us know that if we're not careful, the sin in our lives will contaminate our bread. And it'll begin to spread. It won't just affect me. If I get close to around Brother, Brother Terry and I'm around him long enough, It'll start affecting him like a disease, like a, a virus that starts spreading. Oh, yeah. It'll start rubbing off on people. Negativity can be some leaven. If you're at all time negative and you're around people that's constantly negative, yeah. 
it'll rub off on you. You can be the most positive person that there is. And if you stay and work with or live with a negative person that everything they say is constantly negative and complaining, it'll rub off on you. It'll cause you to be brought down. You may not altogether start complaining and being negative like they are, but it'll bring your demeanor down. So what should we do? Let's get the leaven out of our lives. He said to purge yourselves of that leaven. Well, that can be taken in many ways, whether it's a member doing the wrong thing, whether it's sin coming into our lives, whether it's being around things that cause us to be distracted or contaminates our Christian walk. But let's keep the pure bread Jesus Christ at the center of our attention. And if we'll eat of that bread, I promise you it can sustain us and give us what we need. Going back to what he said there, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they are dead. But this bread that I give you, if you eat of it, it'll be in you as life. It can give you strength. It will help you. This bread that I give you will give you strength on your journey. So let's let's hold on to him. All right, let's all, let's stand, get a song while we sing. The church door is open. If we're one or more ready for baptism, that you can come down and let us know what the good Lord has done for you. Church, you all move as you feel led. Let's sing what a day that will be. Let's just all come to the good Lord leads us in today. There is God.
Anybody else got a song or anything on your mind before we come to a close here this morning? It's been a good place to be. We will say this before we close. If you want more, if you desire the prayers, so raise your hand if you're unsaved. The church will be praying for you. One or more baptisms. Anybody's mind at all? All right. Hey, tonight, West Creek has service at 6 o'clock. No service at Echo on the fourth weekend, so keep that in mind. But Tommy's at Turkey Creek this evening as well, 6 o'clock. Back here Friday night, Bible study, where Tommy's teaching in the fifth chapter of Acts. Come out and be with us then. We have we have worship service too. We've had our good time here this past Friday. The Lord moved. Any other announcements? So, Tony, I just wanted to say Help what a blessed my mom's doing. She's in a nursing home. She has a But anytime she goes to the dining room, when she's able to go to the dining room, she is at a Salem church dinner. She makes sure that, especially the men, have been fed first. And uh, she has a sister, Betty, and Betty Hassel, that she's talking about. And her heart 